Cambridge Insider podcast time. Hello, everybody. Thank you again for joining us. It's a snowy, snowy week across the United States. As per usual, joining me, Mr. Craig Betson, my co-host. How are you? I am doing well today. Um, very excited. Uh, I'm so excited I'm drinking tea instead of my usual coffee. Interesting. Thanks for informing us of that interesting fact. Um, also very excited this uh, this afternoon to be joined uh, or be joining us on the podcast, Mr. Stephen Glasby, who is a student development manager or an SDM, um, as well as a regional manager uh, or an RM in our Chicago office or in the Chicago region. Stephen, how are you? Doing great. Just like everyone else, I guess, in the north and east dealing with snow upon snow, but that's that's pretty typical uh, weather that we would expect here in the Chicago land area. That's that's one hundred percent accurate. It's good to have you on the podcast. Finally, I think this has been a long time coming. Um, I know from my side, uh, you know, you're certainly somebody in the industry, and you've been in the industry for quite some time. Do you maybe just want to tell our listeners very briefly a, a little bit about your history, where you come from, and, and, and your involvement with Cambridge? Sure, sure. Um, so. Just very briefly, um, what what got me started in the international realm was um, actually my university. I graduated from Ball State University back in 2009, and a professor had this great idea. Um, as many of you might know, um, you know the economy wasn't so great, and, and she came and said, "I think you should consider going abroad to teach in Korea." And being um, an acting and Spanish um, secondary ed major, you know, I didn't see a lot of uh, job opportunities in the U.S. So I said, "Why not? Let's 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 take a leap of faith and go abroad." Um, so I took off to South Korea um, three months after graduation, expecting to to do a year there, save up some money, pay off those wonderful student loans, or at least start the process and come back. Um, and then I ended up falling in love and stayed there, you know, for five and a half years, um, off and on in the country. So. Um, it, it turned out to, to be a great experience and actually someone I worked with in the theater world there, um, I was working as a teacher and uh, an actor, she, um, she was the one that connected me with this job and brought me to the Cambridge Network about two and a half years ago. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, you know, we're we obviously very, very proud to have you as part of the network. You're, a, you're an exemplary example of, of the service that we have. Yeah, I hear only good things from all of my all of my schools. So a big part of what we're dealing with, I suppose, the past couple of weeks is to, uh, you know, to to have schools uh, understand a little bit more about uh, specific services and the market and so on. And, and I think today's episode really, you know, we want to focus a little bit about, um, you know, what the homestay service at Cambridge Network is all about, um, what schools should expect, um, not just when they work with Cambridge, but really have this as sort of a measuring, uh, you know, a measuring stick to to measure some of the other partners with as well. So let's deal specifically then with the student development manager role. Stephen, you've you're currently one. You were one. You manage some SDMs in our network. Just from your experience, what exactly do our SDMs do in Cambridge Network? Well, I think the bigger question is, what do we not do? Um, <laughs> you know, um, the SDMs are really that middle person between the school, the host, and um, and the natural parents. Um, you know, we're the ones there meeting with the students every single week, sending reports back home to the natural parents. Um, we're planning wonderful events <clears throat> to, to keep the kids involved. Um, we're attending their sports activities. We're attending parent-teacher conference nights. Um, you know, we're there to wipe the tears away at midnight when something doesn't go, you know, the right way. Um, you know, we're there to jump in and help them communicate and, and um, get answers from the school when they have problems. You know, we really are, as one of my students says, you know, she goes, you're, you're my big brother here in Chicago. And that's really, really what we are. You know, we're, we're working day and night to make sure that that each one of our students are well taken care of and have a wonderful experience in, in high school. Well said, well said. I don't know if anybody that just listened to that minute or so description, um, if, if you don't want to have an SDM of your own right now, then you know I'm not quite <laughs> sure. And Craig and I often say on this podcast that for schools specifically, you know, word of mouth advertising 
having that excellent student experience and then those students and families talking about that when they go back home is the best way for a, a school to grow their program. Um, you know, and, and, and that just shows the, the value of, of exactly what you've said there. Yeah, I totally agree, Stephen. And so, Stephen and Stephen, um, this is something that I think is is really important. And I know at Cambridge Network, we talk a lot about with our schools, we talk about price transparency. We like showing families what they are getting for the amount of money that they're paying. And I think this is an interesting question is, is what sets our service apart from our competitors? Why do families want to come work with us? I would say, you know, because we are going above and beyond all the time. You know, um, the one thing I hear from schools, from other host families, from, from even students who have friends in other agencies is that that SDM person, whatever they may call them, is not around. Is, is not there. You know, when we launched the Happy Student Initiative a few years ago, we really decided that we were going to up how much interaction we have with our students, that we weren't doing enough. And that's, that's the brilliant thing about what we do at Cambridge is we're constantly looking at what we're doing and how can we do it better. Um, and by adding in these weekly check-ins, there's not much that's gonna get by us that um, we can't jump in and help. And also what that's doing is we're building better relationships with our schools by doing so. We're there. You know, I've attended so many um, events at the schools and have been so surprised that I don't see other agencies there. I don't see other people there saying, hi, oh, you're from Cambridge. I'm from here. You know, it, it's me running the show. And, 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 and when I go into schools, you know, whether they have two or three other agencies, for a lot of the faculty, they just know me you know, the, the Cambridge Network representative. And actually, you know, uh, last year, I believe it was, I was at a parent-teacher conference and they were sending other parents to me uh, thinking that they were part of my host pool. Um, so, so it really shows the power of how involved we are in our school communities and with our students. And then also for our host, we're there. You know, that's what the hosts tell me all the time they love so much is when I have a problem or I have a concern, I'm getting a timely response. You're jumping in to, to listen and, and not only be there for the student, but we're also there to be the host sounding board and, and use our experiences abroad and in the, the international education world to really support them as well. So we're really, you know, my goal always in Korea when I was teaching was to build a strong community around my classroom and my students. And that's kind of the same philosophy here, build a strong community for our students. Yeah. That's awesome. And I think it does tie back into, and this is something that Steven and I deal with, and, and you know, I'm sure you deal with it a little bit, uh, Steven, but hopefully not as much as us, is school officials ask us, okay, this all sounds great. And how does this tie back into me getting more students? And I think what you are saying is a great encapsulation of that, of Look, when when students have great experiences and they feel supported and they have a good time, then it's a lot easier for them to recommend your school to other parents and other families. And it, it's all part of kind of a holistic, you know, marketing and student support scenario. And um, just Craig, just before you move on and, and schools should realize that for good or for bad, they get tied into the service of the agency that they partner with. So when you have a great Stephen Glasby that's giving you that SDM service, that goes back to China and Vietnam and Korea as X school are wonderful, they are looking after me. You and I have often said that a lot of times you go to these events abroad, students often don't even know who Cambridge are because they associate the service with the school. So schools really need to remember that, but also understand that when there's a bad service, that reflects very poorly on the school, whether they had control over that service or not. So an SDM, somebody in Stephen's position holds an incredible amount of power over recruitment and recruitment momentum within the school's international program. Absolutely. And I think that's that is a great point.
and you know we are we are and you are inevitably linked to who you work with even if you don't work with anybody generally most students are working with somebody on the other end all right and then so steven this year is especially crazy i mean we know that everybody knows that uh what has been different in the SDM service that Cambridge has been offering due to the pandemic? Well, the pandemic's in essence turned really what we do upside down. And, you know, we, and, you know, before we had students at the schools with our host, we're going, you know, we have our routine, we're going checking in. Now we can't really go into schools. You know, some of our students are studying back in their home country and we're having to support them from literally halfway across the world. Um, our events, you know, that, you know, that's a huge point um, of our service are these wonderful events that that we put together. So that all had to change. And and what I think is so brilliant, and, and this kind of ties in with the, the, the second question about what sets us apart, it's really the people. Um, I have never worked with a more passionate, amazing group of people with such diverse backgrounds and also, you know, such a large amount of people who are so passionate about international education. I mean, most of my colleagues on the ground with students have spent, you know, years abroad and they they have a passion for this work. You know, myself, I'm still, you know, I start Korean classes again next week. I'm still continuing to study Korean and improve those skills to, um, you know, help be there more for my students. And, and actually two years ago, pre-pandemic, I was able to go over to Korea and meet some of our students and help get them prepared for the journey to the US. So I, I think having that group of people helped us meet this challenge, which was how do we how do we still pull off these things for our students? And we've done it in a number of ways. Um, quickly, I worked with some, some SDMs to form a virtual events uh, committee. The committee um, consists of around five of us right now. And for the whole company, we worked tirelessly to put together really exciting events. Some of those included um, bringing in a professional magician that I know from, uh, from Chicago to perform online. Um, last month, we had uh, one of Britney Spears's um, backup dancers come and, and perform and got the kids up moving and dancing and, and taught them a little bit about his experience. We put together game nights. Actually, tonight, um, we're having a a wonderful game night that the team put together um, to celebrate the Lunar New Year. In addition to that, the SDMs have really thought outside the box and how can we still have contact with our students. Many SDMs have found ways to go, you know, do outdoor six feet distance meetings with the students when weather permits and drop off goodies and gifts. This is something I've done, you know, here in my area. Um, we put together wonderful um, activities for the students online, you know, our own personal game nights. And then in addition to all of that, you know, we have this wonderful Cambridge Up curriculum that we're able to showcase and present to our students as well to really help them deal with the pandemic. You know, right when the pandemic started, we were like, oh no, this is gonna, you know, we're feeling mentally exhausted. We're having these challenges just as adults in our own lives, our students have to be doing it too. So we jumped in and quickly created six wonderful 30 minute classes that our SDMs could present when students are struggling with, you know, how do I communicate and what apps are available in the US during a pandemic or, you know, what, what can I do to stay physically fit or to stay mentally strong? We have those materials. So, you know, we've really tried our best to be as proactive as one can possibly be during this pandemic and really try to make sure our students stay the focus of everything we do. And, 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 and I think that's not something that a lot of our competitors can say, you know. <laughs> well said, well said, absolutely. I mean, if, if that's not the, the perfect illustration and description of what an industry leader is, then I, I really don't know. You know, I think this challenge of the pandemic, we saw a lot of just the industry dwindle down because people don't have the resources and the passion and the, and the innovation to do what we've done yet at Cambridge Network. So, you know, I don't want to term it a word of warning, but to all the school officials listening, audit, audit the, the agencies that you work with. If you don't have a Stephen Glassby working on the ground, going above and beyond, innovating due to the pandemic, still being able to have that 
contact with families, with students, with schools. You're doing yourself a disservice. You're probably doing your international program a disservice and long term it'll come back to bite you. So, you know, order to whoever you work with because you want Stephen, you know, you want him in your corner. You want him punching with you rather than against you. <laughs> and I want to be in your corner. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Mr. Gillespie, uh, it's a pleasure. I know it's been a it's been a while coming and I, I, maybe I apologize for not having you on sooner. You'll certainly be a recurring guest if, if I have anything to do with it. Any final thoughts from your side, uh, you know, just regarding the SDM service, anything that you'd like to share with our listeners? Um, just, you know, what I think has been wonderful is to sit back and watch how, yes, we have had so many challenges this year, but these challenges we've met with excitement. We've met with how can we fix this? And, and it's really brought out the best in all of our teams. You know, people who had marketing backgrounds are now getting excited to jump in and make materials for our students um, and, and, and come up with wonderful interactive PowerPoints for our game nights. Like we're really able to collaborate in a way I've never seen before. And I think that's what's been really cool for me is being a remote worker in various areas um, it, it can feel a bit isolating at times, but because of this pandemic, if I can find any positivity, this is one huge one that it's brought us all together even more. We're, we're collaborating and getting to know each other from east to west, north to south, and really trying to pull from our strengths and say, how can we make this work? And, you know, I, I think it's been a huge success. I mean, we do surveys after every event to, to hear from the students. You know, like I said, my approach in education and with SDM work is always student centered. And the students have overwhelmingly said, yes, we love this. This is great. This is fun. We would do this again. What's your next event? And so it gets us excited to plan that next thing. And um, I, I, I think that's what you know, seeing that passion come out and, and seeing just how hard all of our team is working around the clock to take care of our students, it, it inspires me every day, quite honestly. Well, thank you. Thank you for what you do. I know you're, you're important to many, many people, many, many students. I've heard great feedback. I continue to hear great feedback. I always say to school officials, please don't compare me to Stephen Glasby, who's your SDM, because I'm going to come, I'm going to fall horribly short of, of the, you know, the standard that he set. So again, from everybody here at, uh, on, on our side of the, of the ball, thank you for everything that you do for our schools uh, and, and most importantly, our students. Mr. Craig Batson, inspiring episode. Anything that you'd like to share as a final thought? No, no, uh, I'm, I am all good. Uh, I guess, I guess my final thought would be uh, when you ask Stephen for his final thoughts, I got jealous and then I remembered that you will absolutely ask me for my final, final thoughts so that I need to have more faith in you for the podcast that we run together with our executive producer, as Dean. I mean, that was very confusing what you just did. So, you know, to all of our listeners, I apologize. Until <laughs> next time, we appreciate you all jumping on, audit the people you work with, understand the service that you're receiving and that your students are receiving. It is important stuff this. You often just have one opportunity to impress and to leave that impression. To all of our listeners, we'll catch you around the next episode. Bye-bye, everybody.